Hello everyone. Um, I just wanted to share with you uh, how to set up Rudiger's amazing bone morph dial script. Um, I just discovered it this morning and I almost fell off my chair. Um, I've seen a few posts of people saying how do you set this up so here it is. Um, this is the character I've got left over from the last screencast I made which you can find on the forum. Um, what I'm going to do is rig it up so we can use Rudiger's script. Um, first thing I need to do is create a bone layer and this bone layer needs to exist below whatever layer you're going to um, affect with it. Um, if I double click on that you have to rename that layer to morph dials. In fact I'll go back in there. Um, you need to click on embed script file here uh, and on the morph dials you pick the gen morph weight script. On the destination you pick apply morph weights and it's pretty much as easy as that. Now what we need to do is create some actions, create some bones and we'll be ready to go. So the first thing I want to do is create a mouth closing action. So I'll call that mouth close. I will select the bottom lip, tongue, teeth and jaw and I'll close the jaw like this. Now the great thing about this script which you'll see, see later is um, it works on the bones rotation so if I keep rotating it in one direction it will keep interpolating the points in that direction and vice versa in reverse so if you're moving well I'll show you um, next what I'll do is I'll do the pupil move and this is what I was talking about if I select the pupils here well, let me zoom in and this if I move this to the left once I make the action I'll be able to make it move to the right just by rotating the bone in the opposite direction so that's my pupil move um, let's do another one which is blink for this one I'll close the blink here maybe move the pupil up a little bit oh, I've got this selected and then I'll just lower the eyebrow a little bit to make it a little bit more natural and f lastly for this demonstration I'll do the jaw jaw move so for this one again I'll select the teeth the tongue the bottom jaw and move it in one direction whether it's left or right doesn't really matter what I'll do also is maybe shrink this because I don't want it to go off the face okay so I've moved it to one side I can move the tongue well I could move the tongue back just so it's not moved quite so far and then when I rotate that in the opposite direction it will move it on the other side for me um, I go back to the main timeline and what we need to do is create some controlling bones now so I'll create a bone and call it mouth close. So the first thing that will happen is you'll see if I rotate this bone it will close the mouth and if I keep rotating it it will go further than I actually set up the interpolation. It's just using that as a guide for its movement but that's what um, this bone does. So now I'll add some bones for the other ones. Let me just remind myself what they were called. We've got pupil move, jaw move and blink. So I'll create some new bones. I don't want them to be related. I'll go to uh, zero, frame zero. Um, I don't want them to be related to this bone so I alt click off it so there's no relationship. I call this pupil move no relationship, create another one, call it uh, jaw move and then 
I'll create one final one and call it blink. So in its current state, I've got these set up. And what I can do is if I go to, it doesn't work in frame one just because it's picking up all the actions from frame one. So don't try and do it on frame one. But from frame two onwards, you're free to use these as you like. Oh, I can make him gnash. <laughs> I'll open his mouth, move the jaw left and right. So it's actually mixing these actions that I've created. You see that the actual the pupils moving up and the eyebrow is moving down as I set it up before. So close, change the eye side, open. It's on the other side. Perfect. So the next thing to know, which in this example won't be that useful, but if you see his example, you'll see that he can rotate the face up, down, left, right, just by creating all the different bones and they can interpolate. Because what you can do is create another new bone. Uh, we'll create it in the middle this time. It doesn't matter which way. Let's face it that way just so we know that that's the control bone. And then in the top here, if I name it after every bone that I want it to affect as it gets close to, in this case I'll do all of them, just in case this crashes, I'm going to save it because um, I've had a crash before. So I'll call this that. Okay. Um, now what I need to do is just name this bone to mouth close. Also, then I put a semicolon. And then I put blink, semicolon, uh, pupil move, semicolon, uh, jaw move, press enter, and that's all set up. So now, if I go over here, as I move, let me just reset all the bones here. That should reset the face hasn't quite but it should um, now if I move this bone here it hasn't because of this bones proximity to the rest if I move this out of the proximity of these you'll see that it is back in its original state and now I've got this control bone as I move it close to this mouth bone it will close the mouth and open it again and again I'm approaching the blink bone so it's really really amazing the amount of control we've got here now just by moving these bones around is just amazing so what what you can do and you'll see in Rudiger's um, demonstration he set up some bones for just eye movement just for facial expression and just for face um, rotation and by having a few different bone rigs around he even went as far as um, putting text tabs next to each one so you know which one's what. Um, it's just amazing, so amazing. <laughs> I can't get over it. So um, have fun. I hope this helped you um, to know how to set this up and um, we'll uh, see the results on the forums. Thanks for watching.